Good afternoon, welcome to the Laughing Professor. And what we're going to talk about today, what I'm going to show you is print and cut, uh, and certainly printing onto different types of sublimation media, different types of papers and films. Um, first off, you'll have to bear with me because I'm going to use a camera so that I can dart around rather than use a tripod. Okay, so we have an image, uh, a design that I've just picked at random, and we're going to print this onto a number of different uh, sheets, different types of sheets, and then what I'm also going to do is um, I'm going to do one example of sublimation flock, the subly flock, and what I would like to do on that flock is actually cut round this design that we've got. So what we're going to do is ungroup all the image and combine it all together. Okay. Now I'm using Corel here. And then we go across to the contour, select outside contour, so we get an outside line of the whole image together. You can set whatever distance uh, you like, whatever thickness contour you like. Now because I've combined it there's a lot of images in there so it's taken, oh, I was going to say it's taken a bit but it didn't. Um, so let's break that apart so now we can get rid of our design because we don't want that but we do want this contour line. But what it has done, because of the space that I uh, selected it at, it's actually done the inso inside lines as well, the inside holes. So all I've done is just delete them, because I don't want to be cutting uh, the space inside the guy's arm and, and her thumb there. So we've just got the outside uh, outside line. So there you go. So now we have a design that we can print. Now this is a, a vector design, so it'll be printed in uh, in spot colours. And what we've also created now is an outside contour line, so that we can print on a material and then also uh, send the same details to a cutter and contour cut the shape. Now what this means is, instead of cutting that, the boy and the girl there, uh, instead of printing it on a square piece of flock, or subly wrapped decal vinyl, we can actually send it to our cutter and we can cut pretty shapes to match the design that we're printing. So we no longer have to have a regular round uh, badge, if you like, or a patch, or a sticker, a decal, whatever you want we can actually create different shapes. Now a any cutter, whatever cutter it is that you've got, you can do contour cutting. It is a lot harder and you have to line it up manually if you don't have an optical eye or a la uh, laser eye uh, on your cutter. Uh, but it can be done and this I've explained in a different video that we did a while ago. Uh, what I'm going to do here is just switch this over to another program that my cutter uses. There we go. Um, and let it sort it all out. Now this program is drag and cut. What I can do from here is inside this one program I can send it to me uh, Ryko print sublimation printer, print it all out, and it'll also print the registration marks for me. Uh, then I can put that sheet that we've just printed on into my cutter and we can select uh, cut down here and we can cut the same thing uh, exactly as it is. Um, right, so if we select one just times one. Right, now one thing that I've found is 
to turn off the offset otherwise your cut is not going to be uh, central to the, the image that you're cutting around so if I select next the cutter I'm using is the Saga 720 and it calibrates it all for you there we go uh, I didn't know if you can hear that my cutter's next door um, and obviously my computer's in the office um, so what the cutter has done now is move to each registration marks and I can go and visually check and make sure the, the blade is lined up exactly with the flashing point on the screen and we'll go through each one there we go that's a line check so now I can click cut and it'll cut all that and it'll be spot on it'll cut exactly around the image that I want uh, around that shape so what we've done we'll fast forward here to an example that I've, I've got already done um, there we go right so uh, on this sheet this is sublimation flock uh, subly flock it has a gloss uh, back in and then a textured front the front is obviously what we want to uh, print onto um, let me just see here now this is where you got to bear with me using one hand I just I've lost my weedy tool I always have a weedy tool in the office it's handy There we go. Right, so some of the papers can get confusing as to which paper is which, or the sheets and that. You can just peel the corner, you're not going to damage anything. And you can see that this, the flock, is textured on one side and smooth on the other. And then it also comes on a clear carrier. The carrier is not particularly sticky but the flock can be difficult to peel off from the carrier um, so anyway our sublimation printer uh, is printed on the flock there's different types of flock so I'm only referring to the subly flock that we supply uh, and carry now these sheets you can put directly into your sublimation printer and print straight onto these sheets so you would put the sheet, let me show you, you would put the sheet face down so the glossy side is, is, is up facing you, adjust that and print straight on that. So that will go through the printer and it will come, come out like that. So the registration marks are printed on the sheet. So then we put this sheet in our cutter like we've got on screen and it'll actually cut round the shapes which is what it's done here that I've already got ready okay and then we'll say so that's cut that out if I'm just so then all we do is weed away the flock that's been printed and cut and now that is ready to heat press onto the fabric once this is taken away from the carrier you got to be very careful not to get the back dirty or any dust or, or rubbish fingerprints whatever that wants to be perfectly clean um, so that it bonds very nicely onto the fabric okay so that's one example when we go into the, the workshop at the back we're going to heat press that what I've also got uh, on our heat press ready is some subly clear now again if we peel the corner you can see we've got a clear sticky vinyl on a gloss paper backing and then there's no markings on the back of this okay this is very similar to your oracle vinyl your clear oracle vinyl okay 
which you can sublimate as well and I've not got any any prepped to show you that uh, there's a lot of people having trouble sublimating on the Oracle vinyl so I'll, I'll create another video for that uh, so this is a sublimation clear vinyl that we're going to print onto um, and I'm not just trying to remember what I've got laid out I've not contour cut that but we can use a pair of scissors to cut round the prints and then what I've also got ready is the subly wrap now there's lots of different names and versions of this it's sublimation vinyl subly decal, subly wrap mates is similar um, what we stock is the subly wrap uh, in individual sheets now this I prefer it's a lot thinner and more flexible to go around a number of items or you know to stick on a num number of items again it's a, a white sticky vinyl a nice gloss vinyl on a paper backing and on the back is um, checkered it's just regular paper backing well, what I've done is as I mentioned earlier I've run a whole sheet of this through our contour cutter uh, through our um, yeah through our, our uh, saga cutter and I've cu cut the shapes out uh, in fact, I'll show you on this one if I were to just weed away the extra there we go now it's going to be hard to see it stuck to me hand there we go right. trying to get the camera to see it properly so I've weeded away weeded away the extra subly wrap so now I don't know how easy it is to see there we go perhaps that's a bit better um, so now we've just got the outline so what we're going to do now with this subly wrap is with our sublimation print on text print paper reverse print or mirror the image whatever you want to whichever definition you want and then tape the text print paper onto the subly wrap and then we're going to heat press that um, and then we've got a nice print and cut decal there uh, what other examples have I got ready Um, oh, I've done a piece of subly cotton as well. Uh, a sheet on that. The subly cotton. Um, I've done the same design. Uh, but what I did forget to do on that, I think I can't remember. I'll have to. We'll go through in the workshop in a minute. Is is to mirror it. You need to mirror. Oops. There we go, mirror the subly cotton uh, when you print on that. If you've already got the profile set up in your Ryko printer, then that profile, it, it, depending on how you've got it set up, will mirror it for you. So we can just leave all that to normal, select print. There we go, and the profile, there we go, the print style will reverse it for me. Um, yeah, that has that's reversed it for me. So it depends on how your your print is set up and the profile you're using, uh, or indeed if you're using your power driver, then that also gives you the option to reverse it for you, so you don't forget. However, in saying that, one thing to remember: not all sheets need to be mirrored. For example, the subly flock that we've just been talking about, that is not mirrored. That is printed straight onto the sheet. And if we pause there, we'll go through to the workshop and uh, we'll heat press all these and talk a little more. Right, so we've got uh, heat press on. Because it's only uh, fabrics and clothing and, and uh, sublimation sheets, 
um, I'm putting it in a, a, a smaller clamshell heat press. And excuse, I've got all sorts of stuff ready here. What I have is a setting sheet uh, for the different materials, and then if I come across any differences, I'll scribble it out and put in new settings or alterations or put new products in, add to the list, whatever. Okay, so what we're going to do first, let's do some. Uh, this is a subly cotton sheet. Right. So I didn't. I don't need the registration marks. So we cut out what we do want to print onto the fabric. Are we sure these lines here? I don't want any of the registration marks going onto the shirt. Okay. Now it doesn't have to be perfect. We just cut round it, making sure that the only thing going on the shirt is what I have in my hand. Okay. We'll flip that over. Now this is a, an old sample polo shirt that I use. It's got prints all over it. Okay. And inside here, because we've got the buttons and the seams and everything else. What I've done is put inside a Teflon cushion, a pillow, okay, and then put my print on, and then I'm going to cover that with just a, this is just regular paper, printer paper. Butcher paper works just as well, anything that's got no grease on it, uh, and it's not sticky. So we're just going to cover that. And if you'll notice what I've also done, there's already prints on this shirt. And I've just covered that as well, just to be sure that nothing goes on um, to, to the top platen there. Okay, so we've turned our print over. With the cushion being underneath, when I press down with the heat press on this shirt, everything is going to level out. So all these seams, the buttons, it's all going to be one flat smooth level, which is what we want. And that means that the print is going to be nice and even and the colours are going to be spot on without any lines through it or where the seams, you know, where the, the shirt has not been laid flat. And that's the purpose of the Teflon cushion. Okay. We don't cover sublimation with Teflon. Because of a lot of you guys are in both groups, and, or more than one groups, there seems to be some confusion. The Teflon sheets are used primarily for HTV, for your Thermoflex, your Scissor, whatever, your HTV. Okay? It has got nothing to do with sublimation. And the reason being is, I'll tell you, this um, Teflon sheet is like a film and what it does, anything underneath the sheet is going to be trapped. Now that also means when we heat up sublimation and we get the, the moisture from the product, the damp, the gases and everything else, this Teflon sheet is going to block it. It's a barrier, it's a film. So we're going to throw that away. There you go. We don't want it with sublimation. We don't want to trap any moisture, certainly, in our print because that's going to leave circles and marks actually in the finished print. And it's also going to affect the colours of the print because the gases ain't going to be able to transfer properly and certainly not evenly. Okay, so we're just going to cover sublimation uh, prints with a regular piece of paper or parchment paper. Okay, and what we've got on here is subly cotton, subly cotton, there we go, I'm looking on my sheet there, 375 for 30, that's 375, uh, 375 degrees, I'm just changing my press now, 375 degrees Fahrenheit for a time of 30 seconds. Uh, 
not. And I've had me press on the wrong setting. So what we're going to do is press that down. Oh, deary dear. Me pressure set wrong. There we go. Unscrew that a bit. There we go. So it closes and locks nice and easy. Um, and because my temperature's not up to where I want it to be, I'm going to actually leave this print under the press here for longer. Uh, my buzzer is set for 30 seconds, but I'm at the wrong temperature, so I'm actually going to let it cook for longer. Okay, to compensate for the lower temperature. If you increase temperature, you've got to decrease time, and vice versa. I just lifted it and put it back down again just to get rid of that buzzing. Um, and we're going to let it cook for a bit longer. There we go. I think that should do it. Right, and then if we grab a corner, now this is very hot, obviously, you all know that. And then peel it nice and smoothly. <laughs> Super job. Super, super job. Right, the paper does leave a very faint line. I'm not worried about that, I don't care. We'll leave these prints for 24 hours and then the shirt can be washed. Once it's washed, all the fibres will go back to normal. So this outline, the paper line, that will disappear in the wash and we'll just get left uh, with, our, with, with the print. Okay, and then what we've done next to it this is sublimation flock, uh, a patch if you like, a badge, and we're going to do exactly the same, I've got another one here, uh, let's do this little fella, okay, the back is nice and clean, we're going to put him on, make sure our cushion is inside, there we go, put in where we want to be because this is um, there's a bit of weight in this in the subly flock and what I mean by that is just it's uh, obviously thicker than paper so it's slightly heavier in that sense so we don't need to tape it down is what I'm getting at we can just lay it in the position that we want uh, and heat press it it's not going to move anywhere okay so we don't need to tape that down and you'll notice his hand there has been chopped off. That was uh, an error on the offset on the cutter. But for this purpose, I don't care. Okay. Um, that's sublimation paper. Let's screw that up. We've got all these papers using the wrong papers. There we go, the plain sheets. Clean sheet of paper just to cover over that. And I've got a bit of print at the bottom there from an old job that I was playing around with. So we're just going to cover that just to make sure nothing goes on the press. Okay. Sublimation flock is done at 340. So let's turn that back down. 340 at uh, 50 seconds. Whenever we send any sheets out, um, every box that you receive should have one of our sheets in. Okay, uh, and as we do more products, we we add onto the sheet. For example, the sheets going out recently have now got all the settings for the leather on. Um, and what else? The Oracle, yeah. The latest sheets have got the settings for the Oracle as well on. But we'll do another another video on that. Okay, so we've done the sublimation clear. Uh, no, we haven't. We've done the uh, subly cotton sheets. Uh, just print and press, and we're good. All done. And now we're just going to heat press the subly flock. Now. But while I'm just waiting for that temperature to change, subly cotton sheets are for light coloured fabrics, um, cotton only. Okay, so this is this polo shirt 
is a, a cotton, a light tan beige colour. Okay, so and the colours have come up really good on that. I like it. Flock you can use on the same thing as we did on this example that I've pre-pressed but you can put this on any colour black shirts and it's extremely thin it's about the same thickness as HTV your thermoplex you're using it is pro probably a very slightly thicker um, and once it's heat pressed you can barely feel it you can feel it of course but it, it's not that noticeable and it's very flexible so you're not having a big piece of fabric you know that's going to stick um, it is flexible it's not a rigid piece of, of flock on top of the shirt so it's actually better than stitching on a badge if you like or stitching on a patch now these subly flock sheets they say it comes in sheets it comes in rolls and you can actually get it in what's called patches which is your badge okay which has the, the hem round it that only comes in certain shapes and sizes so you're very much limited although they are extremely good because it's got like the embroidered effect edging all around it and they, they do look really cool for your jackets um, your company logos that sort of thing the sheets don't have any edging, it's just a flat print that can go on anything. Even on, you can even put this on uh, the biker's leather jackets. This would go on bags, anything, any colour and most fabrics. I do have another sheet, I've not pulled one out, um, to outline the different fabrics that you can heat press to with the temperatures that we need. Okay. So this will go on anything. The uh, thing with leather, there's a lot of prerequisites with leather. Um, and the best results, in fact, I'd only suggest 100% leather. PU leather, fake leather, forks leather, whatever you want to call it, it is rubbish. So far as we're concerned, it's just going to damage and you'll end up paying the customer a lot of money to buy them a new, new item. Okay, so 100% leathers only. And what I will do before I go on today is make another video on our leather belts. Uh, and I'll talk greatly about that. Uh, so subly flock, so that's ready. 340 degrees at 50 seconds. I'll push down a little on that for it to lock. Um, and that'll just do itself. What else have I got here? Oh! I've got, I've not done a subly rack. Right, that's on my table here. Where's my print for that? Oh, I know it's here somewhere. I bet I've gone on, uh, I'll have a look in a minute. I think I know where I've put that. Oh, there it is. I'll explain that in a sec because this is going to go buzz in a couple of seconds. There we go. Right, and that has gone on. And do what you like with that straight away. Subly flat, there's no precautions, there's no washing instructions. It's the same as sublimation. And even though it's on a flock material that's heat pressed onto your fabric, you don't have to look after it the same as you would as HTV. Okay, it's a sublimation flock, so the bonding, in my in my uh, uh, in my in my view, is actually a lot better. So we can do what we like with that, whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay, obviously sublimation doesn't like bleach. But, you know, nor does anything else. Right, we'll take out our pillar. Right, so that's our shirt. Okay, so we've got subly cotton, subly flock, um, and we're just about to take that off. And we're now going to do the subly wrap 
And this is a decal vinyl. The subly wrap is done exactly the same way as the subly clear vinyl. Now, what I do with the vinyls is I put a piece, let's say parchment paper, whatever you like, a regular printer paper. That's not sublimation paper, that's just inkjet paper. Because uh, I have so much of it lying around, I get so much in at a time. I just use plain paper. Okay, so we've got a piece of paper underneath, and then the same because we've got sublimation paper that's taped. So this, I don't want to move it too much. I don't know if you can see, this sheet has actually been contour cut, and I've lined it up to a light to make sure my print is in the right place. Okay and you'll see the result very shortly. So that's taped on, and we don't want the inks again, as normal, going onto our heat press. So we'll cover that with a sheet of regular paper. And the subly wrap is done at 356 for 120 seconds. Now I'm already at about temperature, so I've just got to change the time. Uh, 120. And it's supposed to be 356. Oops, there we go. Right, and that's only a little bit out, so I'm not worried about that. I'm going to press. In fact, what I didn't do is put the, t the pressure back. Because we've just had a thick polo shirt in there, so I'm not going to need all that pressure backed off. Oh, that's a bit too tight. And that moved. There we go. Push and lock. Um, right, if that pressure is too tight, you'll not be able to lock it. When you push it down, you'll have to hold it. It won't lock. So if you just back it off a little, you'll be able to push it down and a little nudge, it'll lock and it'll hold itself. Um, when the timer finishes, it'll go whizz. Annoying buzzer. Okay. Um, oh, while I'm waiting for that, that subly wrap that's under the press now, I didn't show you this on the video. Um, when I done, I did print and cut on the subly flock, and what I did is actually cut the font out on the on the flock, and it's got the blood splatter on it and it actually come out really good. So you can actually print your own pattern HTV using this subly block. Yeah? You can print your own patterns, then cut out your font, whatever design you want. So here's the rest of that logo. But, uh, I'm trying to do this with one hand, I do apologise. Okay. So we've printed the sheet of flock and we've cut it out. Now in this instance, it's just a, a, a um, just a plain font, okay? But it's got the blood spatter actually printed in it, and then the same with the bat. So you can see you can achieve your own pattern HTV if you like, and, and cut it out, make your monograms, whatever you want, in the different pa uh, patterns. And that's using subly flock, okay? That we did that with. And that's not particularly difficult at all. And my buzzer's just about to go off. Uh, this is a subly wrap, the sublimation decal vinyl. Okay. So we take off. Picking off, burning, burning my fingers. I'm trying to do this with one hand. And I should have it. There we go. I'm only using this because it, it's hot and it's burning my fingers. There we go, we'll just lift that off. Okay, that's our paper, we don't need that. I always screw it up. My desk is messy, but at the end of the day it gets tidy. And I screw it up so I don't actually pick up the wrong piece. Um, I only use these prints once. You can use them again. But with every subsequent use of the print, 
you're going to be using dye each time. So the next time you use it, there's not as much dye on the paper. So your printer's not going to be as vibrant. Okay. If, uh, a push, if you're doing a large run of 200 shirts or whatever, you, you can use the print twice, but I wouldn't use it more than that. Um, I wouldn't recommend using it twice, really, but it, it can be done. I use it once and I screw it up. I don't use it any further, uh, any more than once. Okay. So here's our uh, sublimation vinyl, our subly wrap. On big decals, when you're doing bigger ones, uh, what I normally do is once I've removed the print, put it under, not the same press, it's just put it under another press so it cools down nice and flat. flat. What I'm doing is using a, a cold press just to keep it flat and stop it curling up while it cools down. Okay, now this is only a small decal and it's not curled up, you know, not too bad, it's just, just a little, I'm not worried about that. Yeah. Your bigger sheets, they will have a tendency to curl. Um, so you can just lay it under a flat press, one that's not turned on. All you're doing is just using the top plate just to add some weight to it to keep it flat while it cools down. Okay. So these are print and cut. Uh, and what I did is I cut the sub the subly wrap. Then I put the print on it and I held it up to a light so I could line up my contour cut to it. And now what I'm going to do is actually weed away the, the sheet that I don't want. The backing with one hand. I do videos when it's nice and quiet so I don't get interrupted or anything. But I could really do with another pair of hands and I need to uh, so I can concentrate and there we go I couldn't grab the corner that's where I was struggling there we go we'll weed away the bit that I don't want and we'll see how well There you go, you can do it with one hand. There we go. So now you can see how well I lined up the print on the subly wrap that was cut. Okay. And this will go on your, it'll go anywhere. Right. Now on our website, subly wrap is defined as repositionable vinyl which means it's not extremely tacky. What in reality that means is, is because it's been under the heat press, the adhesive backing is going to take a bit of a while to cure for it to bond. So within what the, what the manufacturers recommend or what they advise is 72 hours. So within the 72 hour window, if we put it on something I'm stuck here. we put it on something we can take it off again and get it lined up nice nice and where we want and then leave it on after 72 hours that adhesive backing will cure and it will become on sort of permanent just a, as your oracle would anything like that okay permanent does not mean that you can never get it off that's a misconception, that's a manufacturer's error as far as I'm concerned, the way they describe the vinyl. Um, you see it a lot with Oracle. 651 and 631 is not permanent vinyl. You can get them off. Okay. Um, what it refers to is the, the type of adhesive backing. All right. And after 72 hours, our subly wrap here in my hand becomes a more of a permanent decal. Okay. So we've done subly cotton, wherever it was. 
There we go. We've done subly cotton, the sublimation flock sheets, which work exactly as the um, the patches, and then we've done the decal vinyl. What I didn't do is the su the subly clear. But that's exactly the same as this. The Oracle is different, and I will do another video on sublimating Oracle vinyl. Okay. With the flock, just going back to that, what you can also do is the labels for the kids, or you can put your logos in shirts, or you can even put it at the bottom, you know, on the inside, because you're not going to see it through. All right, that's the back of the collar. Okay, so you can put it wherever you like. The beauty of these, especially the the if you're doing the kids' names on on towels and, or anything like that, um, is you can iron them on, and that's what we do. We go through a lot uh, selling them to the parents and clubs, and they can just buy the labels already sublimated and cut. All they have to do is not heat press it on like we do, but they can just iron the the name into the little girl's jacket, the little boy's towel, the shoe bag, whatever, providing that the material that they iron onto is not going to melt. Okay? So they can actually iron that themselves. Or just use a regular iron to apply that. The colours will still come up just the same. Okay? Uh, it takes about, I think it's about 10, 10, 15 seconds with an iron for the colours to come up and for it to bond. Alright. Um, what else have we got while we're here? I'll tell you. Um, we've got the flock, I've done that. HTV. Subly uh, sub wrap, I've done that. clear. Alright, just bear with me. I'm just thinking to myself, next video will be on the leather and we'll do another one on the on sublimating Oracle. Okay. Thank you for watching. I'm a vote but I've told you and put across something new. Uh, some more information for you. Thank you very much. Be sure to visit our Facebook page and our wholesale group. Uh, thank you for your custom. Thank you. Bye-bye.